Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being here today. This one is going to be kind of a two for one. I'm going to time lapse through my process of making this pyramid, but I'm also going to go over some questions that I get over on this video all the time. This is one of my most popular videos. I get a ton of questions in the comments and I want to go through some of the most prevalent questions that I get over there on how to make pyramids. So here I'm just showing you the mold I use, and this is question number one that I get all the time. Where can I get a mold? What kind of mold are you using? The mold that I'm using in that other video, I don't even know if it is available to get for sale anywhere, but the request on in the comments for these was so high. Everybody wanted to get a pyramid mold that I just decided I have to find one to carry in my store and I want to get a really high quality one for you guys because they were hard to find. I had to test out a lot of different molds to land on this one. As you can see here, it has a really durable plastic stand in the shape of the pyramid that you actually put the silicone mold inside. And so you have this beautiful stand. It's going to stay put. It's not going anywhere. I do recommend that you either spray a silicone oil or a mold release or even just use silicone oil that you might have in your studio from acrylic pouring or something like that and rub a little bit or spray a little bit inside the plastic stand or on the outside of the silicone mold so that it'll slide perfectly into your stand and then it'll stay there and it won't move just so that you know that you're getting an even distribution of your resin because the mold will be perfectly down in there. You also can spray some mold release on the inside of your mold. I get that question a lot. If you are planning on doing a giant pyramid, if you're going to fill this entire thing with resin, I would recommend using a mold release just because it'll help you get it out when you're all done. I do want to mention here before I proceed with any more of the questions that everything that I'm using in this video, all of the products you can find at dryerdaysartstudio.com. That is my online shop. All of the pigments here you can see are from my Color Joy line that I just launched. I'm going to be using some very beautiful colors in this piece. We have some mermaid pigment, gold, gold sparkle. I'm going to be using some gold metallic. As far as glitters, I am going to be using my Paradise Bay glitter and my Van Gogh. I'll try to put a little caption up when I'm using each so you know which each are. This is the second most prevalent question I get, and it's how much resin should I use? Uh, and this is kind of a two part question because I get it as how much resin should I use to make the size of a pyramid, but also how much resin should I use per layer of pigment? And so I kind of want to go into this here a little bit. It, it really depends on the size of your pyramid uh, as far as how much resin you're going to use total. And you can use quite a bit of resin in this large pyramid mold here. Um, what I kind of like to do, and I think this is an interesting look, is to start with maybe your first section being 50 milliliters of resin, and then keeping with that 50 milliliters for each subsequent layer, and you'll get this descending look in your layers when you demold. I find 50 milliliters is usually a nice number, and then you can fluctuate off of that depending on how deep you want your layers to be. So you could go up to 60 layer or 60 milliliters, 70 milliliters to expand. Uh, and keep growing each layer as you go. But I do sort of like that descending look of keeping with the 50 milliliters as we continue layering on and layering on. What you just saw me do here is I put a little bit, probably about 20 milliliters of mermaid pigment in, and I'm gonna come right in now with about 25 milliliters of the Paradise Bay glitter, and I'm gonna add it right in. Now this is gonna mesh these two together because Obviously that first bit that I put in here of the mermaid is not cured yet. And I wanted that look. I wanted it to be blended together. But if you want those divided looking up sections, then you're gonna wanna wait to let them cure each in between so that they're nice and solid before you add that next layer. This is my Van Gogh glitter that I'm showing you right here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that into the Paradise Bay because I did want a little bit of the appearance of gold to stay with us through this piece. And I thought the Paradise Bay was gonna to look too blue mixed in with that mermaid pigment. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that Van Gogh in here. Okay. 
So now let's roll into that question of how long do I wait between layers? And this has a couple of factors that play into it. It will depend on what kind of a resin you're using. If you're using a quick cure resin, uh, you can come in within 30 minutes and do another layer. If you're using a slower cure resin, uh, you may need to wait four to six hours before you can do another layer. If you want the layers to have more of a blended look, like I mentioned with that first bit I was doing in the very top of the pyramid, I didn't wait very long. I added that glitter into the mermaid pigment because I wanted it to have a more blended look and I didn't want it to have the divided layer look that you see a lot in, in the pyramids. I am using Total Boats Art Resin. So I did wait about five hours in between my layers. I would work on other projects while these layers were curing. I would make a little bit of extra resin on those projects as I was working on them. Uh, and then add the clear to the, the pigments that I'm using here to continually build and make those layers. But again, it's going to really depend on your resin. It's going to depend on the look that you want for your pyramid. And so it's not just a real quick, easy answer. You have to take those factors into consideration. You can see how I'm building my layers here. You can tell that I'm laying this Paradise Bay glitter over a layer that is already pretty solid. And I just want to show here if it's getting kind of messy, if you're trying to put uh, your pigments and your glitters in, it's getting on the side. Simply just take a baby wipe or an alcohol wipe and just gently clean it out. I had done another pyramid uh, before this, so that's why you can see those little, um, little flecks in there because I had already made a pyramid where it had gotten a little messy. You can see how it's curing. And I find that really helpful because you can see how your work is progressing and maybe where you want to go next with the piece. I always get this question across the board with any project that I'm working on. Uh, can I use a torch or a heat gun for bubbles and will a blow dryer or a hair dryer work? The short answer is I strictly use a heat gun, as you can see here, to pop bubbles. I advise to never use a torch or any kind of open flame on your silicone molds. It can permanently damage your silicone molds forever. Uh, they cannot be fixed, you just have to replace them if they are damaged by a torch. And so I choose to only use a heat gun. A blow dryer might get hot enough to pop some of the bubbles, but it blows so much air that you might really move your resin around too much, and plus you're going to kick up dust and other particles from all that airflow that will get into your piece. So I tend to encourage the use of a heat gun to pop bubbles, but you know, of course, please be careful using any kind of a heat gun or equipment like that in your studio. A few more things I'll mention here. Um, I think it's called organite or organ pyramids. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it and I pronounce everything wrong. So it's organ or organite pyramids. I get a lot of um, questions and comments about this. So those pyramids are energy pyramids. Uh, they're used a lot in, in Reiki and other uh, practices like that just even to have one in your room it's supposed to really help with energy pyramids that i make are not organ pyramids i don't promote them as organ pyramids i don't claim that they have any energy benefits but you can make these and there are plenty of videos on youtube showing you how to and explaining how the the importance of the different metals and the uh the way that you put the metals into the pyramids has a different makes an impact on the energy there's all kind of factors that come in like copper, there's all these different metals you can use and incorporate. Mine are simply decorative. They are not organite pyramids, so uh, just bear that in mind. And if you're promoting them as organite or organ pyramids, please make sure you're doing them correctly. Uh, you don't want to be misleading to anybody. And I know a lot of people were sharing that they appreciated that I was not promoting them as organite pyramids because that is not what they are. Uh, but that is a thing that's out there. If you're interested in that, definitely just do your research and make sure you're doing it right. Another question I get a lot, uh, and I don't really touch on this, I know a lot of people ask me what I charge for my pieces. 
Um, and I don't usually share it because I think that's very individualistic of who you are as an artist. Um, the quality of the work, the customer that you're, the customer base that you're aiming for. And so it was kind of hard for me to answer that. Uh, the black one I sold, I believe for, I want to say $75, but it was like the first one I had ever done. And I wasn't real sure what to even price it at. I had never made one before. And, um, this one I will probably just keep to have on my own in my house. I want to comment something really quickly here. You can see there's a lot of bubbles and my resin is really cloudy here. And that is because it was so cold in my studio and I did not warm the resin up well enough before I did this. As you can see, I added some, uh, mirrored glass pieces there that I got from Michael's. That's the only thing I'm using in this. That's not from my store. You can find those mirrored glass pieces in the vase filler section of Michael's. And then I also sprinkled on some of my gold mine and gold cuttings texture, which you can find in my store. And I'm really going to baby this and keep coming in with uh, some heat here and a little bit of rubbing alcohol to spray on there to really try to break up those micro bubbles because I could not believe how bubbly it still was. And that's completely my fault. It has nothing to do with the resin, uh, completely on me. And so here I did one more layer of the mermaid for my base layer here. I had put the silicone in beforehand so that this was easy to get out. It slid in perfectly and then it came out really nicely. And that residue right there is just from my silicone that I had put in that kind of dried along the sides there. And we'll just clean that out. And you can use just warm water and soap to clean these. And here we go, reusable, durable, and then look at how nice this peels out. Just beautiful. It's gorgeous. And there you have it. So head on over to Dryer Days on Instagram if you want to see some more beautiful pictures and videos of this piece. Uh, consider following me over there if you're into uh, checking out art stuff on Instagram. I also have an account for my color line. It's at colorjoy.fluidart. Everything I used in this video will be linked in the description. I'll even have a link for that other pyramid video if you want to check that out. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed it and it did give you some tips, please consider commenting, liking, and subscribing. It really helps me out, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Stay well out there. And until next time, keep on pouring.